Houston, this is Houston. Are you ready for the event? I'm ready for the event. San Remo, Italy. This is Mission Control Houston. Please call station for a voice check. Station, this is uh, Jules Grancier from ESA PAO here in San Remo. How do you hear me? And Jules and San Remo, I have you loud and clear. Welcome aboard. I now leave the floor to the anchor, Carlo Conti. Samantha, we Sanremo che ti parla. Come Sanremo is talking to you. How are you? Sto benissimo. I'm very well. Good evening to everyone. Sto benissimo. Sono molto emozionato di tutte I'm very excited. Out of all interviews that I've ever done, this is the one that takes me highest than anyone else. I can imagine, of all travels, this one is definitely the one that's taken me the highest. Listen, what day of permanence on the uh, ISS are you at? Now, how many do you need before you come home? If I'm not mistaken, we're day number 81. And, and alas, I also say it with a little bit of sadness, I'm getting close to the half point. So this, uh, I believe, this uh, weekend will be the halfway point. Alas, so that means that you're liking it there, that by now you feel at home. Yes, I have to say, by now, I, I really feel comfortable, but I have to say that I've loved being here since the first day, so surely the first days were days of, of joy, truly beyond every scale, huge, for the pleasure of being finally uh, where I, I have wanted to be for many years, where I always dreamed of being, but also the joy of, of discovering the little things about living on the ISS, the uh, uh, possibility of floating, the marvelous ability to look at the Earth from space, and the gratification of knowing that you're doing a lot of activities on board, starting from many experiments in many disciplines, uh, particularly the ones that I care the most about, the ones for the Italian Space Agency that represent the uh, scientific community in Italy. Listen. At this point, where is the ISS with respect to the Earth? Uh, what speed are you traveling at? So, right now our speed is 28,500 kilometers per hour, about, about 7 kilometers per second. Where I am now, unfortunately, it's been a bit chaotic of a day So here on board, so I haven't had a moment to go and verify where we are because we're going so fast. But one thing I want to say, the ISS can be seen by the naked eye from Earth. There are the Internet websites where you can find out where it's coming. And in these days, there are some beautiful passages over Italy, uh, late afternoon, early evening, where with the naked eye you can see the ISS is this dot that is going across the horizon from one end to the other. So if you want, you can also say hello. <laughs> that would be wonderful. We'll do it for sure. Now, you can say the Earth from the cupola, right? So this window that looks out to space, do you go there often? I go more often when I have my free days, weekends. Th throughout the workday, I go there in the evening. It doesn't matter anyways, because every 90 minutes we go from day to night. So even in the middle of the night, there are passages uh, with daylight and night time. Um, but I, I want to say that this is the favorite module of all astronauts uh, to spend free time, and it was made in Italy, in Turin, like the, the rest of the modules um, where the astronauts can work, live and work, uh, were made in Italy. So there's a lot of made in Italy here on board. Often I see the uh, photos that you sent from up there and they show a beautiful earth but from up there do you become more optimistic or pessimistic about the future of our planet 
Surely you become more understanding, you develop a special link to the Earth in, in its entirety. You, you understand immediately up here that all of us, everyone, uh, the billions of human beings are all on this small, if you will, fragile, marvelous, but fragile Earth that is, after all, our spaceship that we're all on and that it's taking us in this trip across space because, of course, Earth moves around the sun and with the sun, it moves through space. So it's our spaceship and we have to take care of it because we don't have another one. It's very funny to see that uh, every so often you let the microphone float, but this weightlessness, is it more annoying or is it fun? And did you adapt quickly? I have to say that I, I was very lucky because my body adapted very quickly. The, the only symptoms I had for a few days were a little bit of congestion in my nose, some headaches the, the first 10 days or so, but then after that they completely went away. So my body rapidly adapted and all I, I had left was the joy and the pleasure, physical pleasure of being able to float. Looking at your face like that, I can see the optimism, uh, happiness and joy, but is there something that you miss of Earth? Well, you know, once in a while you have these moments where you have a craving for something that we don't have here. So a, a nice big salad of, of fresh vegetables with some uh, fresh tomatoes, tasty, uh, that is impossible to have here. Or, or a simple pleasure of, of being able to wash your hands in running water to, to have that that freshness uh, or or even to take a shower these are all things that are not possible here but in the end there are small things that of of anything important i don't miss when the president of the republic the ex president of the republic napolitano in his speech at the end of the year he talked about you um, as, as a champion of culture, what did you feel? Well, from one end, I, I was very uh, flattered, but f I was also a little bit embarrassed. At, but it, it's it's hard to feel like you deserve such an honor. So, I, I, of course, I'm I'm flattered, and I, I thank the ex-president for this honor. But but I don't necessarily feel like I deserve it. You deserve it, you deserve it. Were you ever scared? In these days, I mean, of this experience. Well, fear, fear meaning physical, about my survival and well-being, no. But in the first few days, I, I was a little bit scared of, of making mistakes because up to the third, uh, uh, on the third day, they, they put me to uh, uh, run an experiment for the uh, Italian Space Agency. And so I was a little trepidant to do something that um, was wrong because I didn't know the ISS and everything we do here has a huge work behind it of teams of scientists who maybe worked on that for months and years. So now it's in our hands. So being able to complete this work uh, once in a while, you have that little bit of, of fear of, of messing something up that's going to have consequences for somebody else. Last question. On your uh, onboard diary, you have talked about the smell of space. What smell is that? Well, of course, it's, it's a funny way of, of saying, so of course space, the, the vacuum of space doesn't have a smell, but, but when, uh, when the cargo vehicle came about a month and a half ago, called Dragon, that brought some uh, supplies, when we opened the hatch, we, we smelled the metal that was exposed to space. So this vehicle was launched uh, the day before, I believe, and, and was exposed to space for a while. And then this this smell, not not particularly pleasant, that's somewhat burnt, uh, which the astronauts talk about often, but but kind of in a funny way. So we we define it as the smell of space. Listen, what, what's your Sanremo 
song, I ask all my guests, is there a song from Sanremo that is uh, special in your heart? Well, I can tell you the one that I will wake up with tomorrow. It's uh, a song, Luce, by Elisa. Marvelous, marvelous. So listen, we are going to take advantage of the TV and Sanremo. Is there someone you want to say hello to? No, no, no. No, there's. I, I don't want to take advantage for uh, for private means, but on the contrary, I would like to say hello to all the ones who are watching and listening. Thank you so much, and a big hug to all Italians who are listening and watching, and and truly a great greeting and hug from space. And I hope that I was able to bring you on board with me. I would love to bring you really here, up here, but thank you so much and a big hug. You succeeded. You let us live uh, for a few moments. The. Uh, emotions of being in space. And Rai News already told us that next week you will wake up with one of this festival's songs. So next week you'll have to send a tweet about the uh, song that you will listen to next week. So we're, we'll be waiting for your tweet. I will do that for sure. It will be a pleasure. Greetings to all. An applause and a greeting from the stadium of San Remo to our marvelous Samantha Cristoforetti. Bye, Samantha. Thank you very much, Carlo Conti. Ciao, that Samantha. Grazie. Grazie. I'm taking over for uh, ESA TV and Samantha, and uh, my first question is, you're in, the, you're in the Columbus lab at the moment. Can you tell us how the uh, laboratory is uh, performing those days? Sorry, Jules, could you repeat? There is a lot of uh, background noise. Sorry, Jules, could you repeat? There is a lot of We see you are in the European Columbus Laboratory at the moment. Can you tell us how the laboratory is performing those days? Well, Columbus, uh, like uh, all the science equipment that we have on station, has been uh, very busy this last uh, few weeks, uh, um, especially with the with the arrival of uh, of Dragon, of the cargo vehicle Dragon. We had a lot of uh, experiments, of new experiments uh, uh, brought up. Uh, for example, here uh, in Columbus, immediately as soon as we opened the hatch of Dragon, I immediately retrieved samples for uh, um, an experiment, an ESA experiment called uh, uh, T-cell, about the activation of Im immune cells in, in microgravity and uh, those cells had to be taken out of Dragon immediately because they were in cold storage and they would degrade if uh, the experiment wasn't performed on time and so we had a very strict timeline and uh, we were able to uh, perform it successfully. Uh, and that, of course, is just one of the experiments that have been running. Uh, on Dragon, I also received uh, the hardware, for example, for the um, experiment uh, Drain Brain. And uh, that is a, a, a very unique so far experiment in that it studies a, uh, something that has not been looked into uh, before, which is the return of blood from the brain, so from the head towards the heart. Of course, that on, on, on Earth, that is in a way helped by, by gravity. Um, and in space, where the effects of gravity are switched off, where we are weightless, it's interesting to see how that is actually affected. And uh, this experiment is also, in a way, a technology development um, uh, project, um, because we are, we are validating a, a very simple, non-invasive, non -invasive, um, operator-independent way of measuring blood flow with um, a plethysmograph, which is a little elastic band that I have around my neck um, that is able to, um, to measure the, um, the blood flow. And so you're talking about these applications. Is there for you a critical reason why we need to continue doing uh, research in space?
Well, you know, space just provides this unique uh, um, environment, weightlessness, or in, with a more technical term, uh, microgravity. And uh, that means that um, some effects uh, that we cannot ju we can just not observe on Earth because they are masked by the effects of uh, gravity. All of a sudden, in space, uh, become visible, and uh, we can observe them and measure them. And some of this uh, phenomena we are aware of, we were always aware of, and uh, we come to space because in space we are able to study them and observe them. And then sometimes, you know, you 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 just happen to find out things that happen in space that you did not know about, and that's even more exciting because it opens up new questions and new possibilities of discovery. You talk about your arrival on station, about the arrival of the Dragon, some of the experiments. Is there something specific in your ASI Futura mission that you're particularly looking forward to? We've uh, performed already uh, quite a bit of the experimental program of the um, ASI Futura mission, uh, but there's a lot to come. So, um, as I've said, uh, Dragon SpaceX 5 brought up a lot of hardware for scientific experiments. Uh, we're actually looking into a, another Dragon coming up uh, during my stay on board, uh, with, uh, which will, uh, will bring uh, more um, scientific hardware. Um, there's, uh, for example, more um, in vitro experiments like uh, Cytospace and um, uh, NATO. On, in which we will um, again uh, use the the cubic, which is an, a portable, a small portable incubator with a centrifuge, um, to study the the effect of microgravity um, on uh, on different types of cells, again immune cells or uh, um, bone cells. Um, and uh, we are also looking forward uh, to um, maybe receiving a, um, a small 3D printer demonstrator um, or possibly the um, espresso machine, <laughs> which of course is, uh, is kind of a nice addition to our, our life up here, but it's also a, um, an interesting um, uh, technology um, demonstrator um, and, and research facility about uh, fluid dynamics and handling um, high pressure and, and high temperature fluids in, uh, in weightlessness. Thank you very much, Tomanta. And just to conclude, there is a, a green and red puppet behind you. Are you aware of that? And uh, if you are, can you introduce them to us? My pleasure. This is our uh, scientist alien in chief, Paxi, also known as the um, ESA kids mascot. And uh, you know, when uh, when I need some help, I can call her, and uh, she'll help out. She's been she's been learning a lot about uh, science and uh, microgravity, and uh, sometimes she will come and get us if something doesn't look right, so that we can uh, um, put our eyes on it. So she's been helpful. Thank you very much for that, Samantha. Have a good rest of your day, and speak to you soon. All right. Thanks, Jill. Bye-bye. Station, this is Houston ACR. That concludes the event. Thank you. And thank you, San Remo Music Festival and the European Space Agency. Station, we're now resuming operational audio comm.